Okay, welcome back to Senate Education, uh, Tuesday, May 18th, 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, we have Secretary French with us uh, for a little while. This is as we are wrapping up uh, a number of different bills. The Secretary and his team have been with us uh, certainly through this entire session. We are immensely grateful for their partnership, being ready to testify and all of the work that they have done to keep our students, uh, teachers, staff, families safe. And uh, so wanted to start by thanking you, Mr. Secretary, for all of that. This is uh, looking more and more like the final week, thankfully. And so we thought we would just take some time and see if there were any questions that uh, senators have. Uh, I did mention to senators that you and I had talked about uh, final PCB language, which is advancing in uh, the budget it may already be in there with a uh, testing date by 2024. And that of course there would be, we're all recognizing that there'll be a need to address whatever is found uh, and, and how we do that. Um, we'll be working on together. Probably some of that work may happen this summer, certainly upon our return and we'll monitor and uh, make changes uh, as needed. So I just didn't know if you wanted to add anything there, Mr. Secretary, as it relates to the PCB piece. Oh, good afternoon, Dan French, Secretary of Education. Um, and to echo your remarks, Mr. Chair, I just want to thank the committee for their support. I think, you know, on behalf of all the agency staff, we've uh, felt tremendously supported uh, by the legislators and uh, legislative leaders during our, this session, and particularly during this phase of the pandemic response. It's been challenging to manage, you know, both the emergency and respond uh, to the legislative process, but I think uh, we've always felt tremendously supported by you, and um, we really appreciate appreciate that, and I think we've uh, pat ourselves on the back as Vermonters. We've brought, you know, collaborated very well um, through uh, unprecedented moments and very complex moments from a regulatory standpoint. So I, you know, again, really want to thank you for your leadership and your help in this uh, last several months. Um, in terms of PCBs, I think, you know, we do have uh, a pretty concise language now in the budget bill, what I've seen. Um, I think it'll, you know, get us down that path, get the process started and, uh, also calls you know attention to the issue next year. It's going to be a complex issue, as you know. The remediation aspects of PCBs are more complex than lead or radon, even for that matter. So, uh, but it'll get the get us moving down that path, which I think is important. Any questions for the secretary on uh, PCBs at this point? Okay. Thank you. Um, the secretary and I also just touched base briefly about uh, their, the agencies issuing uh, the memo regarding Kern Hatton. Um, Mr. Secretary, I don't know if, if you just want to just remind us again, you know, you, you all have a certain uh, purview as it relates to Kern Hatton. And if you wouldn't mind just refreshing our memories on that and what you all, uh, consider are, are able to consider and a little bit about your decision. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I think, you know, firstly, the way I, I um, sort of frame this, and I know uh, our general counsel, Emily Simmons, did this when we, we had that uh, opportunity to speak to this issue before this committee. I think it's important to acknowledge, firstly, the Agency of Education does not investigate crimes and sexual abuse is a crime. Um, that's done by the state police, law enforcement, DCF, what have you, but that's not our role uh, as often is the case. However, uh, these types of issues and particularly as it pertains to independent school operations can fall into an area where we do have oversight. Um, and that's essentially what's transpired. Um, in our previous testimony, we talked a little bit about sort of that delay and how that got started. Uh, we do have um, sort of two ways, I would say the state board or the agency can get involved in the oversight of an independent school. Uh, the older sort of traditional way is what's kind of transpired here with Kern Hatton. Under Act 173 of I think 2018, uh, which was the special ed uh, reform law that we're implementing on, uh, the legislature also gave the state board some oversight functionality as it pertains to financial oversight of independent schools. So that, that sort of, uh, those two moments or those two regulatory pieces, we had to sort out essentially in the fall. 
and uh, once once we figured out how that was going to proceed, the agency took the lead in doing uh, its part under the sort of the older regulation, which really pertains to independent school approval. And um, upon review of our regulations, we uh, followed through on, on constituting a team to do that as required by the regulation. And I charged a team to look at two areas in particular that I thought were germane to our regulations, and they are uh, to what extent uh, the school, the organization essentially uh, failed or didn't fail to report uh, mandatory uh, sexual abuse, and then to what extent the school was managing its uh, background check process appropriately. So um, those, those were the two major areas of our regulatory oversight that were charged to the investigatory team. They did their work, uh, they produced the recommendation to me and then I have the responsibility under our regulation to formulate uh, a recommendation uh, or some conclusion, essentially. And the, the options there are uh, basically uh, no further action is necessary, or I could make a recommendation for revocation or suspension of their ability to operate as an independent school. If I had decided the latter, uh, that would then go to a state board process for appeal and review. Um, I concluded that no further action was necessary. However, in my uh, response back to the school, I indicated that we were going to institute uh, two sort of incremental oversight uh, actions in the coming year uh, to make sure that they're following through on some of the organizational uh, and operational deficiencies that we did uh, notice as part of the review. So that's essentially the conclusion. The only other piece I'd, I'd observe is that, um, you know, we've been involved in uh, the, the rulemaking process under Act 173, as you know, that's, that involves special ed rules, also involves independent school rules. The state board's been working on that for a couple of years now uh, with the agency, and uh, the state board has uh, sort of looked at the regular sort of non-special ed aspect of independent school rules, and I think uh, there's been some lessons learned, not necessarily from the current Hatton investigation, but through oversight of other schools in the last year or so. And I, I think the state board's really done a good job of trying to modernize its regulations in this area. And I'm hopeful that as part of the rulemaking process under 173, that there will be stronger regulations emerging in this area, um, which I think will be useful uh, to both independent schools and to the agency and its oversight function. Thank you. Senators, uh, you'll find uh, the report and a letter from Secretary French on our website, uh, which I would encourage you, I know, I know everyone's being inundated right now, but uh, if you can have an op take an opportunity while we're still in session to review, and then we can be in touch with uh, either Secretary French or Ms. Simmons with any additional questions. But wondering right now if there are any uh, immediate questions that anyone has for Secretary French. Senator Lyons. So, oh, thank you. And I, I honestly haven't read the, I did look through the report earlier today and, and I just saw your letter with the conditions that you've placed uh, for review. And I think that that's helpful. The, your authority allows for you to have um, unannounced visits to the school. And mostly that is for the review of academic work, but also for counseling support for kids. Is that right? I mean, so yeah, I don't, the I'm counseling not... piece, I, I mean, for me, the counseling piece becomes important. We all know counselors are integral to school environments, whether it's for academic counseling or for helping kids through a bullying situation, whatever it is. So are, are you will you are you satisfied I guess is the first question with the counseling support available to kids at Kern Hatton yeah I, I don't know if I could answer that at this moment I mean one of the things you'll read uh, from the report it, it is a, a product of the COVID environment so there weren't site visits involved and I think the team was satisfied and I in my review of its work I was satisfied that the team did its best uh, to focus in on the, the questions that were essentially given to them as a charge. But I think the broader, when you get start talking about some of the broader issues involved in sort of a qualitative judgment of the program, um, that would require more of a site review. And uh, that's, that's not uh, factored into this review here. But I think you know that the sort of the general oversight of, I would argue also public schools, 
uh, is a theme that the that we are working with with the state board, and I think it is a theme that we'll try to work on um, as a result of the the work in front of us in examining the regulatory construct. Um, we've lost some of that over the years, I think, largely because. Um, particularly on the public school, school side as we stood up adequate yearly progress under No Child Left Behind Act and all that was involved uh, with really focusing on academics. We lost what used to be called the public school approval process, which was a site visit and focused on uh, several different aspects of the school operations. We still have what's called integrated field review, which does get us on site and doing some things with the public schools. But I think we, we need to take a look at that sort of basic approach of um, you know, the visitation and what does that mean for a state state review of an independent and a public school? Will you have a plan to do that? I mean, I, I mean, obviously, uh, things have been a little bit crunched, given the emergency, but will your organization put together a plan for visitation and evaluation on Kern Hatton going forward? The plan as right now is, is represented in that letter uh, okay. for us to, to do those two site visits. And uh, I would say there's there's a sort of a dichotomy here between regular education and special education. So this, the special education piece could involve more interaction uh, as those regulations are, are different essentially. Um, but for now uh, on the regular ed side, our plan is to do sort of those two follow-up uh, mechanisms that are laid out in the letter. Okay. All right. Thanks. And uh, yeah, no, I, I, how much of what you, of your conclusions that you drew are the result of some transformation on the part of the current Kern Hatton administration? Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, that is, that's essentially one of the findings uh, of the committee that just the act of doing the review caused the organization to change its procedures, uh, you know, as the committee delineated off a series of compliance uh, measures it would be looking for or wanted more information on, um, which the team, you know, articulates as reviewing over 3000 different documents, um, that surface deficiencies in the school was immediately responsive uh, to that uh, in terms of policy and procedure and governance practices and so forth. And that I think your question gets to that that sense of responsiveness on the part of the school if they were interested in responding and addressing those issues, and they were. That did certainly weigh into uh, my conclusion that they were they were really interested in trying to improve their organizational um, oversight and operation. Can I ask one more question, Mr. Chair? Absolutely. So what the. Um... As you're thinking about the transition for the school and what. It... I, I don't know what oversight you have with the school's relationship either with guardians or parents. And is there what kind of provisions has a school put in place to uh, ensure those folks that their kids aren't going to experience what children in the past have experienced at Kern Hatton? Yeah, those are great questions. And I, I would agree those would be very useful uh, mechanisms to have in place. Um, that's again, sort of, it was beyond the scope of this review, uh, but going forward, I'd be very interested in any of those sort of qualitative uh, measures that we, it would allow our review to be very efficient of independent schools if we had some sense of customer satisfaction essentially or client satisfaction, but that's that's currently not contemplated in the, the review structure that's in regulation, but it's a, it's a great idea. But you have authority to do that. You have authority to expand that uh, assessment. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I wasn't prepared to necessarily speak uh, to those regulations today. But uh, again, I would I would think it's a great idea. Um, and I know, you know, again, the state board has worked on uh, a revision to these regulations that I don't think have been reviewed in some time. So it's it's a great idea, and it's something I can bring forward. That would be good. I, I mean, it would be great for us to to see what is contemplated by the board and by AOE. Uh, I don't know what, if any, legislative action would have to be be engaged to to take that a next step. Yeah, and now um, now that this review is complete, we can talk rather openly about the process and try to extrapolate out some general, you know themes and conclusions from the process is it sufficient we can have that more open conversation um, I think there is a uh, as we've John Carroll the chair and I brought to this committee 
there's a, a bigger scope of work here that needs to be sorted out in terms of modernizing the regulatory construct. Uh, but that can happen, I think, fairly efficiently once we understand sort of the general themes. Um, but then to, to have this conversation surface more generally in the General Assembly next, next session about, well, what, what should be that construct and to what extent is additional statutory uh, oversight necessarily or statutory direction, I think that'd be a very useful conversation. One last question. Would the overlay of, a com of community schools um, infrastructure help with Kern Hatton? And so obviously a community school is very special. Uh, and if we were to suggest that Kern Hatton become a community school, uh, just a thought. It's yeah, I'm, too soon to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I'm having trouble making the connection. Yeah. Um, right. I think you know the the idea for me of a community school is it's, it's this idea of community. integrated service, integrated service delivery, yeah. and it's really talking about the public school structure and its intersection with social services. Right. Our independent well. schools, in our independent schools function in many different ways in our landscape. You know, we have the, the academies that essentially function as public high schools, large public high schools in their regions. And then we have very, very small, uh, I'll call them boutique uh, therapeutic schools that serve a specific niche in a, in a delivery landscape. So, you know, there's everything in between. Uh, so it's hard to, I think, make a general statement about, you know, like I don't, Kern Hatton functioning as a community school. I think we'd have to understand how it functions in the ecosystem around it. Uh, is it more like a niche therapeutic school or filling a specific regional need or is it serving something more broad? Uh, from a public edge perspective. So I think we'd have to do that evaluation, but um, it's interesting, uh, you know, that would get at, you know, what are the requirements to be an independent school and to what extent they'd be required to provide community school-like services as a condition of approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary and committee members. Again, I would encourage everyone, uh, even though it's crunch time to review these documents and we uh, can Happy to ask uh, the secretary to have perhaps Ms. Simmons back if we have additional questions, you know, during the week uh, as we find time to look into this a little bit more. Uh, Mr. Secretary, we're on the floor in 10 minutes and I just wanna, if there's any final uh, comments from you, I wanna give everyone an opportunity to take a, a break before we return to the floor. I know people have to make phone calls, et cetera. No, I would just say thank you again. Uh, right at this moment, we are um, working on sort of uh, ending the state of emergency, I think is an easy way to describe it. So part of that's uh, from an education perspective, uh, articulating, out, articulating out the course of action for the remaining part of the school year, but also uh, sending a signal as best we can as to what the fall will look like. Uh, so we're, we're in the process of doing that planning right now. Um, certainly you're familiar with the summer matters program and ramping through summer. So I think right now uh, we're in a pretty good place. We still have, as the chair noticed, we have a lot of work in front of us uh, for the next phase, but um, knock on wood, I think uh, the system's exhausted right now, but feeling pretty good about uh, where the next couple of weeks are heading relative to the end of the school year. So it's good. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. My only request, and I know it's already on your mind, but if, if there are ways for us to continue lines of con, you know, communication as you're opening things up, we're on recess, but for the committee to get periodic updates, if that's something that you could just uh, perhaps keep on your mind uh, and think through with us, maybe it's a, an email from Mr. Fisher or Dr. Boucher periodically letting us know how things are going, uh, that would be, I, I know, much appreciated by everyone. Yeah. I would be happy to do that. And it's a good point. Um, definitely. Yeah, we'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Uh, Take care. Have a great afternoon. Committee, uh, unless I see any final questions, we're going to adjourn to the floor. And this hopefully will give everybody a few minutes to uh, be ready to. Uh,